Greetings, Earthers, Martians, Belters, members of the OPA. Welcome to episode three of Expanse, the unofficial podcast. I'm your host, Lex Starwalker, and with me on the show today, our co-host, Nikki Starwalker. Thank you. Welcome to the show, Nikki. Thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm happy to be talking about Thomas Jane today. Yes, yes. Today we are talking about Thomas Jane, who plays Detective Miller. I can never remember his first name on the show. <laughs> on Sci-Fi's website, they just say Miller, and they say that he just goes by his last name. So I guess we could just call him Miller. <laughs> See, now you make me wonder, did they give his first name in the book? Yeah, I think they did. I okay. seem to remember that they did. Yeah, but everybody just always calls him Miller. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're, we're talking about Thomas Jane today, who's playing Thomas Miller. Or <laughs> <laughs> Thomas Miller. <laughs> <laughs> that is not his first name. And yeah, I'm really excited to talk about him. But before we, we get to Thomas Jane, we, we do have a, a couple other things to talk about. First, in what is quickly becoming a tradition on this show, our corrections and retractions <laughs> segment here. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Last week on episode two, we talked about Dominique Tipper, who is playing Naomi Nagata. So if you haven't listened to that, definitely go check that out. And we erroneously mentioned Miss Tipper's website. And that is not her website. That's some website made by who knows who. <laughs> um, no affiliation with Miss Tipper at all. Yes. And I do apologize for that. Um, I don't remember exactly where I saw it, that that was her official website. I meant to say, oh, we don't know for sure, but I didn't remember to say it. So I do apologize to everyone. And I was so glad that she reached out to Lex and I on Twitter and just said, hey, guys, just so you know, that's not my website. That was awesome because you know how hard it is to get feedback just from fans. It was so nice to get feedback from the person that we talked about on the show. So it was very kind of her. Yeah. And again, I'm just blown away that she actually listens to the show. That is awesome. So we apologize for giving you uh, faulty information. Uh, she is on Twitter and she is on Instagram and she's Miss Tipper on Instagram. Um, but I went ahead and uh, took that website out of the show notes for episode two. And we already had her Twitter in there, but I added a, a link to her Instagram. So she's MI55Tipper on Twitter and Miss Tipper on Instagram. Great. Yeah. Actually, that's only our only correction and or retraction yes. this week. We're doing better, Nikki. Awesome. <laughs> Three episodes in and, and uh, we're, we're already improving. <laughs> um, wow, I thought I had something else, but I don't. That was it. Yay, we could talk about Thomas Jane now. Yeah, so Nikki, why don't you tell us about Thomas Jane? And, and I guess uh, we're kind of setting a precedent, or we did last week, where we'll talk a little bit first about the actor, and then we'll talk about the character. What do you think? Okay, that sounds great. Cool. So Thomas Jane was actually born in Maryland. I'm not sure where he's living right now. I couldn't find that. But he is an actor, a producer, and he's directed before. Awesome. Um, yeah. And I am looking at Sci-Fi's website this time. <laughs> yeah. So I know this is correct information, but he was in Boogie Nights. They call that his breakout performance. Okay. And from there, he was in Deep Blue Sea, which I know a lot of our listeners probably saw. I did not get to see it. And he was also in The Punisher, which I am nice. a big fan of. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen that movie several times, but in preparation for this show, I <laughs> watched part of it again because I just love it. And when I picture the character of The Punisher in my mind from the comic book, I see Thomas Jane. So he has really become the Punisher for me and I think for a lot of our listeners as well. Very cool. Are you going to tell us about that little gem you found of his sure. regarding the Punisher? Yeah. So he was in the Punisher in 2004 and he became a big fan of the actual superhero or anti-hero, I suppose. And he published his own little short um, well, I think he was responsible for bringing it out in 2012. 
and he showed it at a convention. It's called The Punisher Dirty Laundry. And I watched that this morning as well. And it was great fun. And that's why I watched part of the movie again, because it just got me all revved up for The Punisher. (laughs) Cool. Well, I am not at all in the comic books myself. So for me and and other people like me out there, uh, can you tell us like what The Punisher is? Like what's his deal? Sure. (laughs) Okay. This is going to make me sound a little bad, but (laughs) The Punisher is an anti-hero because he is not afraid to murder, kidnap, um, blackmail, anything to get to his means and to enact justice, I suppose. Um, But it's really... It's really fun because in Dirty Laundry, he asks one of the villains, he's like, do you know the difference between punishment and justice? And I won't spoil it for you. You can go on YouTube and find out the answer to that question um, and look up Dirty Laundry. But it is so much fun to watch that hero because he he's just not afraid to do anything. He's not one of these heroes that's like, oh, I can't kill anyone, you know, and they just knock him out. And to me, that's so lame. <laughs> yeah, it is. I just really in So what's enjoy his the what's his deal though? Like what makes him a superhero? What's his does he have like special powers or or what? Sure. No, he is very very strong. I believe the character's background in the comic books is that he w- used to be a marine. And Thomas Jane himself, rumor has it, rumor has it being code for, I read this on Wikipedia, (laughs) which could be false or true, but rumor has it that Thomas Jane trained with the Navy SEALs in preparation for the Punisher. So the Punisher does not have any superhero abilities, but he knows how to fight, he's trained, and he is a badass. I mean, he's incredibly strong and knows his weapons, Um, but... The kind of origin story for the Punisher is that his he was working for the FBI and his um, he killed some really important people in the mob and the mob got angry about it and decided to get revenge and they got revenge by killing his entire family and this was at a family reunion in the movie so that's kind of his backstory but no superhero powers so I mean this will probably piss off hordes of people that will send me hate mail. But to me, he kind of sounds like Batman without the cool gadgets and resources <laughs> and detective abilities. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can see your, what you're saying. Uh, he's a bit more relentless than Batman, and he has such a tortured past that his character, it seems like he kind of tortures himself. Like you see in Dirty Laundry that he's just living in the back of a van I mean, just sleeps in there. There's not even, doesn't even look like there's a bed in there. And well, and he just, doesn't have the cliche of, oh, I can't kill anybody. Right. Yeah. Does Batman not kill anybody? I can't recall. I think so. Yeah. That's, okay. Him and Superman both, that's kind of their, their deal. deal. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, Batman, it's kind of like the, he lives in luxury every other minute that he's not Batman, right? And is a butler. And so the Punisher is very different from that. I mean, he lives like... He's poor. <laughs> cool. Cool. So d- so he doesn't have any special powers. So how does he survive being a superhero? Does he have like bulletproof armor or something or, or what? Well, yeah, he wears bulletproof armor. Um, and when he was in the FBI, of course, he was trained in all different weapons. So I think he has a stock of weapons. I don't remember that well because I only watched part of the movie this morning and I saw it a long time ago. But um, yeah, I mean, he... He just, I guess he's just a good fighter. I mean, his, his combat skills are top notch. So that's okay. why he succeeds. I see my producer waving. We should move on. <laughs> my producer's me, by the way. But uh, uh, this isn't a show about the Punisher. So I guess I'll quit asking questions about that. I you can, just need to watch it. I can go Google if I really want to know know more. So yeah, back to Thomas Jane. So he was in the Punisher. He did this this little film of his own about the Punisher. What else have we got? I I know one thing he's been in that I've seen, but I don't want to steal your thunder here. No, it's okay. (laughs) I will definitely mention that. He was in The Mist and Dark Country. Um, I did not get a chance to see that. He was also in a TV series called Hung, where he played Ray Drucker. Yeah. And uh, when Nikki told me that, I immediately knew who he was and realized why 
he always looked so familiar to me because I, th- I saw like the first few episodes of that and led to me asking you the funny double entendre question of, is he still hung? <laughs> to which Nikki wasn't sure how to answer. <laughs> Well, he stopped playing the character in 2011, <laughs> but as for his own self, I can't answer that question. Nikki is sure that he is still hung. <laughs> quite sure, quite sure. <laughs> we haven't heard of any uh, any uh, accidents involving farm machinery or anything, so so I think we can assume oh my. that nothing has changed. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he was also in Medium. Um, which I enjoyed a lot. And finally, he was in Buffy, the Vampire Slayer. And of course, he was in a lot more than that, but... Oh, we won't hold that against that him. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, man, my inbox is going to be so full this week. I know. Expansepodcast at gmail.com. Attention, Lex, for all your hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there was a point in time where you watched Buffy. <laughs> no, I never watched Buffy. I watched Angel. Oh, okay. I, I loved Angel. And like I knew Buffy was a thing. Mm-hmm. And I knew a girl who was super into Buffy. And she's the one that got me into Angel, which I really enjoyed. And then after I'd watched all of Angel, I went to watch Buffy because I'm like, oh, well, I know he's in Buffy. And I suffered through like, I don't know, a few episodes of Buffy and okay. just couldn't take it. <laughs> It is pretty, pretty terrible. <laughs> so yeah, guys, I don't like comic books and I do not like Joss Whedon. So expanse podcast at gmail.com. Send me your hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll try to combat that because I do enjoy my comic book movies from time to time. <laughs> but I do really like the guy that played uh, Angel. Can't yeah. remember his name off the top of my head, but. That's all right. <laughs> and the guy that played Wesley, he was so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> Although Wesley was more fun before he went dark. Because uh, then he just became a cliche. But when he was like the geeky, fumbling, bumbling, you know, British <laughs> monster hunter or whatever he was supposed to be. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I love the line where Cordelia asks him, she says something like, do you have any clothes that a man would own? <laughs> 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 All right. Tangent number two already. Yeah, really. Tangents, <laughs> the Expanse unofficial podcast. <laughs> All right. Sorry, Nikki. Where were you? That's okay. Filmography. Yeah, that, that's about it. Um, as far as what he's in today, he's going to be in movies coming up in 2016 that are currently filming. And of course, he's going to be in The Expanse. So he's very busy. Yeah, yeah. And and you're just hitting highlights, right? This isn't everything. I am, no. He's been in a lot. <laughs> it would take a while to go yeah. through it all. So hopefully at this point, we've at least mentioned something that you've seen him in. So you have a face to put with the name and you're like, oh, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've seen quite a few images of him. Um, I feel like in this is just, I'm just pulling this out of my ass, but I feel like he so far has been the most photographed character in The Expanse. I I feel like the majority of images I've seen of The Expanse, he's in them. Oh, really? Okay. I'm guessing it's because of the hat. (laughs) It's just so like he has such an iconic profile Mm -hmm. with the hat, you know, that it's like very recognizable. And I think it makes sense that they would use his image a lot. And he's uh, he's a pretty important character in the story. So I I guess we can trans transmit transfer transition ah into talking about detective miller who who thomas jane is gonna be playing okay and you know what i tell you what while you tell us what you think of detective miller i'm gonna see if i can find his first name okay you do that well detective miller is this hardened well detective miller works on ceres which is the largest object in the asteroid belt yeah it's a uh, dwarf planet slash asteroid Okay. His job is very hard because it really shows him the worst sides of humanity. And the name of his security company, Lex? Uh, Star Helix Security. Um, so I actually, we, we had to go in the book because we neither of us could remember for sure if it was Ceres that he's on and uh, what the name of his security company is. So I found this little bit about Ceres, kind of a little introduction to it. Okay. So I'll just read this. 
Ceres, the port city of the belt in the outer planets, boasted 250 kilometers in diameter, tens of thousands of kilometers of tunnels and layer on layer on layer. Spinning it up to 0.3 G had taken the best minds at Tyco Manufacturing half a generation, and they were still pretty smug about it. Now Ceres had more than 6 million permanent residents and as many as a thousand ships docking in any given day meant upping the population to as high as 7 million. Whoa. So um, Ceres is a really cool place. And, and I think it'll be a lot of fun to see this on the show because it's got so much atmosphere. Like, like if you remember like the, uh, it's like all these tunnels like carved into this, you know, dwarf planet and it's all like underground to protect from, from radiation and, and whatnot. Yeah. And, um, the gravity varies, you know, depending mm-hmm. how deep into the planet you are. And, uh, yeah, it's teeming with people and ships coming and going every day. And star helix is a corporation that manages the security on on series. So instead of having like a state operated police force like we have here in the United States, mm-hmm. it's a private corporation that that handles that. Okay, I see. I couldn't remember all of those details. <laughs> yeah, so so Miller is a detective mm-hmm. for the the cops basically yeah and he really i mean with all of these people he sees some of the worst things that humanity has to offer in his job and so he's become worn down and very hardened and very jaded yes very jaded and i think his role as thomas jane's role as the punisher is really going to help him perform this oh yeah totally Totally. Definitely some parallels between the two characters. Yes. <laughs> I'm so excited to see it. Because Miller's not afraid to shoot someone in the face either. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is one of the things I like about him. Mm-hmm. And um, kind of from a, a story or literature perspective, one of the roles that he plays in the story is a foil for Holden. Because Holden, uh, James, right? James Holden? Yes is very idealistic. He, he tends to see the best in people. He believes that most people are good mm-hmm. and will do the right thing. And Miller has what I would consider a more realistic view of humanity in that an individual you may or may not be able to reason with, but as soon as you get them in groups of people or... As soon as you get them in groups, people are really just scared, frightened, dangerous, violent, like animals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are animals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he he's much more jaded, but I think more realistic. And, and so he and Holden really butt heads because there are many, many, many times where they both believe the complete opposite thing is the right thing to do in yes. a given situation. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I like how they balance each other in an interesting way. And you can kind of see both sides of the argument in the book. So I. But really, Miller's only seems right to me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. And Miller, we meet Miller and... He's just getting a new job of tracking down a missing girl. And that girl is Julie Mao. Yeah. And that's our story. Yep. And uh, Hiller, Hiller, (laughs) and Miller is, um, in a lot of ways, he's the stereotypical noir detective. And I think we mentioned in one of the previous episodes how each book of the series kind of marries space opera with another genre. And the first book, Leviathan Wakes, which is presumably going to be season one of the TV show, is kind of a combination of space opera and noir. Mm -hmm. So Miller is really where that noir is coming from. Yeah, and I have no problem with that. (laughs) And like right down to... The, the the hat and being an alcoholic, you know, it, yeah. it's all there. Yeah. He doesn't have the trench coat, 
but <laughs> no. <laughs> and and it wasn't a hard rain. The kind of rain that drove the slime down the streets. Or <laughs> we don't have anything like that because it's out in space. But, but but other than that, I think they hit all the beats for the noir. Yes, yes, and I you can kind of draw a parallel to the grimy atmosphere where he lives because I believe Miller lives in a That's hole. That's a good point. That's a good point. And it's very cramped, and he doesn't get to see a real sky like we do on Earth. It's right. just all a fake appearances yeah. and so that is kind of oppressive and yeah. depressing the same way that a grimy rainy film noir uh, scene would be yeah and, and we also have have the great uh noir trope of you know he is on an investigation that his superiors don't want him doing and he just he can't stop like he has to solve the mystery even you know, if it has negative consequences on him because powerful people above him don't want him asking questions and digging into things. Right. Yeah. So I, I think they, I mean, I'm not, I, I know more about noir from things that touch upon it or draw upon it than actual noir itself. Like I haven't seen a lot of real noir, you know, like the bonafide period stuff, but I, I think of things like, uh, you know, the Dixon Hill stuff that they did on Star Trek The Next Generation, mm-hmm. um, even like Sin City to yes. some degree. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. So so from from my limited experience with noir, I, I felt really satisfied that they like really brought that flavor into the story mm-hmm. through this character, but they didn't like take it too far right. to where it became like a farce, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very expertly it. done. Exactly. <laughs> they handled it gracefully. So, yeah, I guess that's kind of Miller's role, at least in the beginning of the story, is he's a detective investigating this mystery. And he also has a partner named Havelock, who is from Earth, right? Yeah. He's an Earther. And um, this will be fun to see in the show, too, because Miller's a belter. So he's got, like... The belter build, which is, you know, longer limbs, slightly bigger head, very kind of slight build. Mm -hmm. And Havelock's an earther, which, you know, they're stockier, denser bones structure, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he's on this station with millions of people, you know, probably 90 plus percent of which are belters. So he sticks out like a sore thumb (laughs) and everybody kind of is pretty shitty to him. Mm -hmm. Even Miller (laughs) <laughs> to some degree, you know, so it's kind of fun seeing them together and, and seeing Havelock deal with all the prejudice of everyone around him who thinks that, you know, he's less because he's from Earth. Right. Yeah. I wonder if they will even have that character in the show and you have a hunch that they will. The sci-fi web page with the cast does not list Havelock. One Expanse fan site says that Jay Hernandez is going to be playing Havelock. Jay Hernandez, here he is. Eh, this doesn't say who he plays. All right. Uh, we were talking about Detective Miller. So he said he's detective. He works on security. He's got the noir th- thing going on. He's a drunk. <laughs> <laughs> he's divorced. I don't know if that's a spoiler. It's not a spoiler because it doesn't happen. That's background. It doesn't. He doesn't become divorced during the show. Okay. So if he did, I would say that's a spoiler. But um, yeah, and and that has a lot to do. He's kind of depressed, right? Yes, he's depressed. Of and course, you probably knew that from the fact he's an alcoholic, right? <laughs> I already gave that away. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but he has an ex-wife that may or may not come into the show. We'll see. Yeah, well, she's never in the book. So, um, you know, he does this thing where he imagines she's in the room, like reacting to him a couple times when he's like in his little apartment. Um, so they, they might, you know, have an actual person be there and have him interact with her. So obviously if they do that, then they'd have to cast someone as his ex-wife. But mm-hmm. she never actually appears in the story. So Okay. We'll have to see. But yeah, I, I kind of feel like that's all we can really say about him without getting into how his character develops. Yes. I will say that, well, I think all of the main characters have good arcs, 
which is to say they, you know, start out as one person and through the story, you get to see them change and grow and, and become someone different. Mm -hmm. um, and Detective Miller is no exception to that. He, he has a really pretty amazing arc, mm -hmm. I think. And, and again, there's kind of nice contrast between his arc and Holden's arc. Yes. Because I think in a way you could see it as they kind of start at like opposite ends of a spectrum and they both kind of go more towards the other one's side, you know, yes. like they each kind of influence the other one, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool because especially in the beginning, they don't really get along that well. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of headbutting going on between the two of them. So, and that'll be fun to see on screen as well. Mm -hmm. Last week, we found out, Nikki, that Naomi Nagata is your favorite or your second favorite character. Mm -hmm. Your first favorite character is Bobby. Is Detective Miller your third favorite character? <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or should we just try to or stop trying to number? I think we should stop because I just love them all. It's really hard to pick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I really, I really like Holden. Or I mean uh, Miller, especially in the first book, because I, I'll confess, I, I might get hate mail about this too. Uh -oh. Man, I'm just going to piss everybody off this week. I, starting out, I did not like Holden like at all. Mm -hmm. um, he grows on me through the series, um, but definitely in the first book, I was I did not like Holden, and a lot of times I found Miller saying things to and about Holden that I wished I could say. Like <laughs> Miller would say or think something about Holden and I'd be like, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was very lukewarm towards the character Miller in the books. Okay. Um, I didn't feel one way or the other about him, um, but it was always that when he interacted with Holden, I, like you, found his arguments to be much stronger. Yes, yeah. So, so yeah, um, Detective Miller, definitely one of the main characters of the story. And uh, Thomas Jane, I, I think, is definitely going to bring it. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm really looking forward. You know, we, we, we talked a little bit last week when we were talking about Bobby Draper, about how acting chops, at least to us, is much more important than what someone looks like, which mm -hmm. is pretty superficial. Mm -hmm. And even a lot of that can be changed. Right. But, you know, all that said, you know, the first time I saw him as Miller, I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Miller. Mm -hmm. I was like, I think he needs a little more stubble. He looks a little bit too <laughs> clean cut. But other than, and, and you know, obviously he can, he can grow his, his facial hair out a little bit and that's mm -hmm. solved easy. But yeah, yeah, he fits my idea of what, what Miller looked like perfectly. <laughs> The only argument I had in my head when I thought about it is that the Thomas Jane that I know from Punisher is stocky. He's very muscled and he doesn't look like a belter to me. Right. But I think that, of course, as an actor, he'll get into the role. And like you said, the camera can change things. And yeah. And they might they have him lose weight. Yes. It wouldn't be the first time an actor had to lose a bunch of weight. For a, for a part. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know that we really know yet if they're even going to do anything with the Belter anatomy. Right. Because I would think, you know, the producers of the TV show, like that's a decision that they have to make in the very beginning and then stick with it. It's like mm -hmm. either we're going to try to do this and we're going to try to portray this or we're just not going to do it. Right. You know, and there's definitely other ways you know, because you might say, well, if they don't do it, then how how can you have the prejudice between the different groups and, and the fact that, you know, a belter can recognize an earther on site and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But there's other ways that they can do that. Um, the easiest is through uh, accents. So the belters actually have a whole different way of talking mm -hmm. than the earthers and the Martians do. So I think that if they made the decision of we're not going to even deal with the physical differences and in the TV show, that's just not a thing. We're just not going to do it. Yeah. I think they could still make it believable by the differences in culture and language between the earthers, marshers and Martians and belters. I, right. I think they can make it work and make it believable. Yeah, definitely. And honestly, I think that would probably be the better way to go 
Because again, you know, when you're making that decision, if you're going to do the physical thing, it has to be convincing Mm -hmm. and it has to be consistent. That means every belter has to be tall and thin. As soon as you cast, you know, one person that doesn't fit that, it it kind of deflates the whole thing. Right. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. I think if I was making the decision, I'd be like, you know, the role that this plays in the story is giving a way for people to tell each other apart, and we can do that through language and how people dress and how you know how yeah. people act. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't have to deal with this whole anatomy thing and, and then have an effect or a casting thing that could cause us problems or make the show kind of hokey or, you know. Right. Yeah. And one human doesn't need um, an anatomical difference to hate another human. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, totally. Well, or fortunately. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but anyway, you can follow Thomas Jane on Twitter at Thomas Jane. Highly recommended. Awesome. We'll have his Twitter in the show notes if you want to follow him on Twitter. And again, if you're on Twitter and you're interested in following people involved with the show on Twitter, be sure and check the episode one show notes at starwalkerstudios.com slash expanse, where we have listed Twitters for everybody that we could find. And there are a couple of the actors that aren't on Twitter, like the lady that plays Julie Mao is not on Twitter. Okay. But everyone that is on Twitter that we could find, we we put up there. Sweet. All right. So that is, uh, that's our, our third episode. Let me check the schedule here and see uh, who's up for next week, unless you already know, Nikki. I do not. So next week, episode four of The Expanse, we will be discussing Stephen Strait, who is playing Jim Holden. Yay. And he is, he is the focal point of the whole series. Yeah, you could say that. I would definitely say that because he is maybe the only character that we get point of view chapters from in every book. Mm -hmm. I'd have to check to be 100% certain on that. But for people that that haven't written, haven't written, haven't read the books, uh, the books are written in the third person limited point of view, which for those that that don't know all the writing slang, um, what that means is the story is told from the point of view of a specific character at any given time, but it's not first person. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you are Miller when you're reading about Miller. It's not like I did this and then I did that. It's like Miller did this and he said this. And, but you're always in one person's head at a time. And the way they do it in the book is the chapter title is the name of the person's point of view that you're in. So for instance, in the first book, we get points of view chapters from Miller. We get ones from Holden and it changes. Like they're not the same in every book. You have different points of view characters in every book, but Holden is a point of view character in every single book. And I'm not sure if any of the others are. Another possibility would be maybe Naomi, but I'm not Mm -hmm. sure that we get points of view from her in every book. I'm pretty sure we do not. Yeah, I, I think you're right. And Something else that's interesting is every book they will have at least one kind of minor or supporting character who is a point of view character in that book, but then you either never see them again in future books or at the very least they're not point of view characters Mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how the books work. Yes. I think Holden will be fun to talk about because he has cropped up (laughs) in both of our other discussions about characters and cast so far. So he keeps coming up. That's how how central he is, I think, to this story. In a lot of ways, I think if you had to say who is the main character, it's it's Holden, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he affects a lot of what happens and a lot of the other characters' lives and how they react in their world. Yeah, and, and that's kind of a, a cool theme throughout the series that I, I didn't even really think about until you just said that, Nikki. But, you know, how in this, this huge world or universe, whatever you want to call it, solar system would be the most accurate thing to say with all these people in all these different places, how one person can make a difference in everybody's life for, for good or bad. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, so that's going to wrap it up for us this week at Expanse, the unofficial podcast. If you would like to reach us, please email us at expansepodcast at gmail.com. 
We're both on Google Plus. I'm just Lex Starwalker. Search for Lex Starwalker. And we're both on Twitter. I'm at Lex Starwalker. And I'm at Nikki Starwalker. And please visit our website, starwalkerstudios.com. And you can find the page for the expanse at starwalkerstudios.com slash expanse. You can find the show notes there. We uh, have lots of interesting uh, links and you know, sources of more information about The Expanse there if you'd like to learn more. Also, we have our other podcasts on the website at starwalkerstudios.com, including our Beer Tasters podcast all about craft beer and uh, Game Master's Journey, which is all about tabletop role-playing games. And another great place to get more information about The Expanse is our Google Plus community, right, Nikki? Yeah, it's uh, it. We try to post on it often. Yeah, and any time we find like a, a good video, maybe an interview with, with a cast member or a, a good new trailer or just any information about The Expanse, we, we repost it there. Uh, just earlier this week, they released a new poster for it, which is really, really cool. So we, we put that up there and, and shared that. And yeah, so if you want to learn more about The Expanse, Uh, definitely go check out the community at at the Google Plus community. You can find a a link to it in the show notes um, or just go to Google Plus and search for the expanse and communities and I'm sure it'll turn up. Last time I checked, it was the only thing expanse related on on Google Plus. Okay. And uh, just one thing I want to say for for those of you that join the community, just like this show, the Google Plus community is for the TV show, The Expanse. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, it's for fans of the show. So just like we are not going to spoil things possibly for the show from the books, we also ask that, you know, everybody in the Google Plus community observe that that same uh, rule and respect for everybody else in the community. Um, you know, obviously, if someone posts a spoiler, I'm going to take it down. I'm going to remove that post at my discretion. Um, but, you know, I can't spend every second of every day refreshing the Google (laughs) plus community. And I would really hate for someone to post a spoiler and spoil something for a bunch of people in our community. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just don't do it. You know, if you're not sure, you know, ask one of us, you know, ask me, I'm the one that really handles the community. So you can message me privately on Google plus and say, Hey, is this cool? And and I'll let you know. Mm -hmm. Um, Other than just posting like truly like unrelated spam, that might be the best easiest way to get yourself removed from the community oh, so no. so don't do it because i i'm not you know that that could become a mess and the, the only other uh way to deal with that would be just to shut down the community and and i'm not going to do that right. so people that they can't play nicely will be removed <laughs> <laughs> you have been warned <laughs> So yeah, we try to uh, avoid posting spoilers there. Now, you know, we do have at least one video that's an interview with the authors and there may be some spoilers in that video. I'm I'm honestly not sure. It's been so long since I watched it. But, you know, that's you have to go watch the video, right? Mm-hmm. It, you're not just going to see that on the, page. on the page, right? So if you want to post a link to something that has spoilers, that's fine as long as you let us know that, hey, there's spoilers here if you haven't read the books. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. So speaking of the books, uh, I think I'm going to start reading them over again. Oh, wow. I started rereading Leviathan Wakes earlier this summer, and I got about halfway through it. And I thought, you know, it's so long until the show comes out that I think I'm going to wait and and do this later. Um, so I think I'm going to start it over again now. Um, it'll help to brush up for, for this and, and for the show coming up. Fun times. Yeah, I really want to be aware of the books when I watch this show so I can be aware of any changes okay. that they make because I, I think that'll be really interesting because I'm sure there's going to be changes. You can't you know, take something from one medium to another without changing right. something. And already you know, they're bringing a Vasarala in early, um, mm-hmm. which I think is a good move. Yeah, that'll be interesting. I just finished reading Drive, the short story from James S.A. Corey. Sweet. And it was a pretty quick read. It took me maybe an hour or so. Okay, cool. It was just fun. And I honestly, I couldn't put it down because of the way it's written. Yeah. You just, you have to know what happens. It's very tense. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 
Yeah. It is. And I was a little surprised. Um, but yeah, I can't, I won't give any spoilers away, but it's a fun read and I enjoyed getting some background on the uh, person that invented the Epstein drive. Yeah. And, and just, you know, for anybody that maybe this is your first episode of our show that you're listening to, if you go to the show notes for episode two, we have all of the novels and all of the very short stories and novellas there with links And we have them in publication order because that's the order that James S.A. Corey recommends that you read them in. If you're curious as to their order chronologically in the story, you can go check out the show notes for episode one Mm -hmm. where we have that. But we have a link to Drive. You can actually read it for free on the Sci-Fi Channel website right now. I I don't know if that'll be there forever. Probably will be. But um, that one you can go read for free. Awesome. So, yeah, and it's a quick read. Mm-hmm. The other the other novellas and short stories, at least as far as I know, are only available in electronic format. So you can get them uh, from Amazon in like a Kindle format. So if you have a Kindle reader, you can read them on that. Otherwise, you can get a Kindle app for your smartphone and read it on that. And they're usually about two or three bucks a piece. Okay. Now, Drive is available in print as part of an anthology. And if I remember right in the show notes, I have a link both to the anthology if you want to get it in hard copy and to the the free version that you can read on sci-fi site. So it's kind of to me, it's kind of a trade-up. It's like it'd be nice if I could get them in print and just get that. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so whether I'd rather pay two or three bucks for something in e-format and I have to read it on my computer and on my phone. Or I have to pay like $8 and get a book of short stories for one story I want. It's kind of a a toss up for me. Mm -hmm. What I'm really hoping is someday in the future, and I I think this is inevitable, that they will compile all of the Expanse uh, material other than the novels, like all of the novellas and short stories, and release that in a print version with them all together. So I really hope they do that someday. And that would be awesome. And I will totally be getting that (laughs) because I would love to have a hard copy because I really don't like reading books on a on a screen okay yeah I I actually enjoy reading on my tablet but I think an e-reader would probably be a little easier on my eyes because I do have to turn down the brightness so much but I'm with you I guess if I had a had to pick I'd pick print yeah so that's uh, that's it for us this week. We will be back next Thursday with episode four. We'll talk about Stephen Strait. And uh, until then, conserve your oxygen and your water, people, because resources are scarce in the outer solar system. So long and thanks for all the fish. 